than yesterday. I need you more. More than words can say. I need you more. idea. I asked Miss Leah if we stood all the deacons shoulder to shoulder and if she got up on top and moved that camera just a little down. What'd you say? <laughs> Pass. <laughs> so good morning everyone. Glad morning. to have everyone here this morning and uh, we're thankful for the rain. We need the rain. So uh, we had 34 members present in school in Sunday school this morning. Uh, remember your tithes and offerings. We're taking up the, the re region offering this month. The goal was $1,300. We've received 207 so far. So just remember to give. Uh, the July newsletters in the box in the foyer. Uh, Wednesday night meal this week is hamburgers. Please sign up on the sheet, bulletin board, if you're going, what you're going to bring. And remember the adult Bible study and Kingdom Kids at 630. And uh, this year we'll be setting up a booth at the Scott County Fair. Uh, we will have a lot of uh, opportunities for us to uh, uh, to share with one another. We'll be there Monday through Friday, July 3rd through the 7th, from 4.30 or 4, 4 to 10 p.m. We will uh, give out free water and popcorn, as well as information on our church, and will be available for anyone who needs prayer. This is a huge uh, outreach ministry for us. It's, uh, uh, to let us take time to let Christ show that, that it lives in our community. Uh, and you can sign up out on the bulletin board if you have any questions. Uh, see Pastor Tyler. Uh, and the Scott County Fair Parade is next Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, if you're not able to ride on the float, uh, please uh, be here at, at 2 p.m. to see also Pastor Tyler. Also, uh, our 20-something uh, Sunday school class it meets now on Sunday mornings. We just started that. So we invite you, if you have members of your family or if you're in your 20s or something, please come out to our new Sunday school class this morning. If you open your bulletin, we've still got tons of stuff in there. Wednesday night's uh, meal. Uh, We've we got different meetings and stuff going on. A lot of things going on. And if you're visiting us or if you have a prayer concern, a little tear out here, just fill that out and drop it in the offering plate. Um, I got a card here I want to read. 
and everybody saw her this morning, and I'm glad she's back. Susan, we missed you. And Susan sent us a card. Church family, thank you so much for all the prayers, calls, visits, food, and well wishes. I am overwhelmed with our kindness. And the last sentence she wrote here, I, I think that sums it up for all of us. I love my church family. Amen. So thank you, Susan. Before I turn over to Pastor, let's pray. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Mickey, yeah. Uh, need to meet with combat guys after church today. Combat meeting after church today. So yeah. Sir. Also, trustees meet after church. In just be a few minutes. Just be a combat trustees right after church meeting. All right? Let's have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it's good to be in your house this morning to worship you, dear Heavenly Father. We come each week. We'll have many prayer concerns, but also there's many praises that we have, dear Heavenly Father, because we're so thankful that you are our Heavenly Father, and we have the opportunity to come to you with all our thoughts, our needs, and our hurts. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you be with the pastor this morning as he brings the message let us live and go out and spread the message, dear Heavenly Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. I'm kind of wondering about this row of deacons up front here. So it kind of looks suspicious. <laughs> I won't touch that. It is good to see you all this morning as we come into the Lord's house. Uh, a couple of words of reminder. Um, um, Operation Christmas Child, big pencils and big erasers. Or big pencil sharpeners. Pencil sharpeners. Big pencil sharpeners and big erasers. Yeah. I got kind of close to the ballpark. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. So please bring those in. Uh, Red Buckets will be out this morning, remind you about our mission offering for the region uh, for American Baptist Churches of Indiana and Kentucky as we seek to come together to do missions here in our state, um, important offering. We're a little low on our goal, so please give and give generously this morning as the Red Buckets come out. Uh, many different things that are done through the work of our region. Um, uh, I know last time mentioned about uh, the pastoral search process. That's always the one that gets people's attention. But throughout every single year, who pastors pastors? The region ministers. So pastor the pastor ministry, as well as our uh, work with Latino churches here in the state and with the Korean or Burmese churches. So there is a lot of work to be done. Please give and give generously as we seek to reach our Go of $1,300. Uh, many, there are a lot of prayer concerns. Here's the regular list, and Barb Deal gave me her list. Thank you, Barb. <laughs> We're going to see how I do. Actually, you got really good handwriting. I, I think you get to do all my writing from now on. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's pray for... Uh, uh, Hank Collins with dementia, Hazel King with cancer, uh, who are both in the Hanover Nursing Home, uh, praying for Roy Campbell with congestive heart failure, doing a little bit better these days, grandson Colton Howard, who is home after reconstructive surgery after a car wreck, praying for Barb's sister, Joyce Spence, um, suffering with stomach virus, and praise be to God, 13th great-grandchild on Wednesday. Are you like trying to like corner the market on great-grandchildren? Okay. Aspen Don Fortner was born at 8 pounds and 10 ounces. That's a good-sized little child. Praise God indeed. Uh, as we uh, look at our prayer list this morning, praying for Bob Nolan, praying for Sherry Joyce, praying for Judy Peacock, praying for Jeff Riley, for Teresa Thompson, for Danny Snelling. you got to go back to the doctor. You've been a bad boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Praying for Carly Gross, for Armando Romero, for Madeline Pressy, for Rita's nurse, uh, nieces and nephews, for the family of Barbara Sherrod, family of 
Betty Alsop, families of those who were lost in the submarine disaster, and family of the three boys in Ohio that were murdered by their father. Other prayer concerns this morning. Yes, sir. Praying for mom. Amen. Others? And praise God, Susan is doing better. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Good to see you this morning. And uh, uh, camp this past week, 14 youth went to camp and two decisions for Christ were made. Praise God indeed. Amen. 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 Other praises? Y'all, I want to say y'all are really quiet today. This is scaring me. <laughs> Fishing. Fishing group didn't fall in. Amen. <laughs> okay. Well, it has been an interesting week. Um, went to the dentist uh, with no plans other than getting a teeth clean. Then had to come back the next day and get a root canal. So. I've never had one before. Praise God, I'm on this side of it. And that's over with. Enough of that. We had a little excitement in the office on Thursday. Uh, all of a sudden, the fire alarm started going off. I looked at Judy, she looked at me, and we just like popped up and started running around looking to see where this fire was and couldn't find it at first. And finally, it was one of the electrical outlets uh, back in the uh, um, Family Life Center. Um, had caught on fire and fire department was out. There was no problems. It's taken care of and it's been replaced. We just praise God that we were here in the building at the time. I uh, was able to catch it and what have you. So may we have a quiet week this week. Amen? Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we just stop as we approach your throne of grace with boldness and confidence this morning as we come here today father lord seeking your face and praising your most holy name lord we cannot praise you enough as we look about our lives and see how you touch our lives each and every day as we praise you first and foremost because we are creator of all that we know and experience and how much more we have to praise you when we consider the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, in our lives. I don't deserve Jesus, Lord. I know we don't. And I praise you, God, that you gave him to us all the same. <clears throat> that he was willing to die on a cross for my sins, for our sins. And he makes all the difference each and every day. And we praise your holy name. We thank you, Father Lord, as we gather here for worship this morning. As... We have the privilege to join with sisters and brothers in Christ to, to, to catch up, to laugh, and to cut up, and to share with one another, Lord. What a joy it is indeed. But most importantly, Lord, as we focus our hearts and minds upon you this morning, Father, may all that we say, all that we do, we point others only to you, Father. Lord, we pray for our life as your church, your hands and feet. May you just continue to open our eyes to how you are working in our lives and how, what you have in store for us, Father, that we can truly be your family. How we can reach out to so many in their time of need in this world that so desperately needs Jesus. Father, we've come with many concerns upon our hearts as we pray for Bob, for Sherry, for Judy, for Jeff, for Teresa, for Danny. <clears throat> as we pray for Carla, for Armando, for Madeline, for Rita's nieces and nephews, for the Sherrod family, for the Alsop family, for families who have lost loved ones in this submarine disaster, for the family of these boys in Ohio, as we pray for Mom, as we pray for Hank, for Hazel, for Roy, for Colton, for Joyce, 
as we just lift up all of these to you, dear Lord. Praying for your healing touch and grace over each and every life as only you, the great physician, can do. And we pray, Lord, that you will show us, your people, how we can reach out to these and to so many more and be your hands and feet, your conduits of grace and love. Thank you, Father Lord. We just pray all these things in your Son's most majestic name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand with us this morning as we sing. Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Come and drink these living waters. Tired and broken, peace unspoken. Rest beside these living waters. Trust is calling, find refreshing at the cross of living waters. Lay your life down, all the old gone. Rise up in these living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. Spirit moving, mercy washing, healing in these living waters. Lead your children to the shoreline. Life is in these living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Come and drink these living waters. Love, forgiveness, vast and boundless. Christ, he is our living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. In your 
Encamped along the hills of life, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, a word, a word of God. We tread the road the saints above, when shouts of triumph rock. By faith we like a whirlwind's breath, swept on o'er every field. By faith by which they conquered death, is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find, drawn up in dread array, let tens of these be left behind, and onward to the fray. Salvation held on each end, with truth the bird about. The earth shall tremble beneath our tread, and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given, before the angels he shall know, his name confessed in heaven. In onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love of faith will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can gather together. We can praise you for all the blessings you've given. Lord, as we bring back a portion and give back a portion to what you've given us, we know it's never going to be enough for all the glorious things you do for us. But Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for continuing to bless us better than we deserve. God, that you've heard the many prayer concerns and Lord, that you know the ones that are on our heart, the ones that we can't even speak of, but Lord, we know you're working in each situation. God, we thank you and praise you for who Jesus is in our life. Thank you for his sacrifice. And in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen.
Turn in your Bibles this morning to Ephesians in chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, as we are preparing for Vacation Bible School. The theme this year is Keepers of the Kingdom. Did I say that correct? All right, yes. And the focus is from Ephesians chapter 6 as we take up the whole armor of God. So in this preparation, I thought, let's, let's spend some time looking at this passage in some detail. And I... Uh, I got all sorts of things in my office, so I brought this one out this morning, and it says, put on the full armor of God, and it has that scripture from Ephesians chapter 6 on here, and to help us visualize, so if you want to come up and look at this afterwards, I'm just going to leave this up here for this uh, time period as we go through this sermon series. But most importantly, let us read from God's Word as found in Ephesians 6, beginning with the 10th chapter. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end... Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. And I think I read two extra scriptures there this morning. Don't worry, you don't get charged extra for them. Take up the whole armor of God as we look about the belt of truth. <clears throat> what is truth? In John chapter 18, as our Lord stood before Pontius Pilate, he had went from one trial to another throughout the evening of Monday, Thursday, into the early morning of Good Friday. And we read in John chapter 18, verses 37 and 38, when Pilate says to Jesus, So, you are a king. He's trying to get his head around all this stuff, all this Jewish stuff as a Roman official. He doesn't understand. So, you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? You know, this is a question that we still struggle with in our day in time. And truth seems to be such a fluid word indeed. Today, we take truth for granted. With Jack Nicholson, we scream, you can't handle the truth. And we shrug it off and don't even try at times. We even joke about the power of truth in life or how it can be used. During a trial in a small Missouri town, the local prosecuting attorney called his first witness to the stand. She was sworn in. Asked if she would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help her God. The witness was a proper, well-dressed elderly lady, the grandmother type, well-spoken and poised. The prosecuting attorney approached the witness and asked, Mrs. Jones, 
Do you know me? And she responded, Why, yes, I do know you, Mr. Williams. I've known you since you were a young boy, and frankly, you've been a big disappointment to me. You lie, cheat on your wife, manipulate people, and talk badly about them behind their backs. You think you're a rising big shot when you haven't the sense to realize you will never amount to anything more than a two-bit paper-pushing shyster. Yes, I know you quite well. Well, the lawyer was stunned. He couldn't even think for a few moments there. Then he slowly backed away, fearing the looks of the judge and the jurors' faces, not to mention the court reporter who took down every single word of Mrs. Jones. Now, not knowing what else to do, he pointed across the room and asked, Mrs. Jones, do you know the defense attorney? She again replied, why, yes, I do. I've known Mr. Bradley since he was a youngster. He's lazy, bigoted, and has a bad drinking problem. The man can't build or keep a normal relationship with anyone, and his law practice is one of the worst of the entire state. Not to mention, he cheated on his wife with three different women. Yes, I know him. The defense attorney also fainted, was seen slipping downward in his chair, looking at the floor. Laughter mixed with gasp thundered throughout the courtroom, and the audience was on the verge of chaos. At this point, the judge brought the courtroom to silence, called both counselors to the bench, and in a very quiet voice said, if either of you morons ask her if she knows me, you're going to jail, and I will personally throw the key, key away. We live in a world today in which we either take the fluent, the truth quite flippantly, or as something that changes from person to person. The truth can be dangerous in the wrong hands. The Bible is filled with God's truth, amen? We read throughout the scriptures of truth. In the English Standard Version that we used, 141 times the word truth is used, and that's not, in counting, uh, not counting truthful, truthfully, etc. And I feel obligated to read all 141 scriptures this morning. But I'll do that this afternoon when you're not here. Don't worry. Let me just share a few of them with you. Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5, we read, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation for you I wait all the day long. Psalm 86 and verse 11, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Psalm 119 in verse 160, The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. And then we just have 138 more scriptures to go. No. The most daring claim of all time and the most truthful one by far considering truth is found in John's Gospel, chapter 14, in verse 6. When Jesus was asked, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In Jesus Christ, we know, we see, and we experience truth in the flesh. We throw that word truth around quite a bit. What does it mean? There's at least three principal meanings of the word truth. One, the body of real things, events, facts, actuality. Two, the state of being the case, dealing with facts. And number three, a transcendent, fundamental, or spiritual reality. In God's word, we see all three present. We know truth indeed. Now, we live in a world in which truth is portrayed as very relative, do we not? That absolute truth does not exist. And it's like fingernails down the chalkboard for me when people talk about my truth, that it can change from person to person. 
And that's not truth at all. Truth is an objective reality that comes through God himself. I remember some time back reading uh, an experience that Abraham Lincoln had when a stubborn disputer seemed unconvinced with his arguments. And President Lincoln said, well, let's see. How many legs does a cow have? Well, four, of course, the guy replied in disgust. He said, that's right. Now, suppose you call the cow's tail a leg. How many legs would the cow then have? Why, five, of course, he replied back. Now, that's where you're wrong, said Mr. Lincoln. Calling a cow's tail a leg doesn't make it a leg. Truth is objective and is real. The fact is, writes Rabbi Zacharias, the truth matters, especially when you are on the receiving end of a lie. We look this morning in Ephesians chapter 6, and as we are instructed to put on the full armor of God, well, let's just start reading verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Paul is completing this letter to the church, to the Christians in Ephesus, as they are new Christians, and he is seeking to build them up in the faith. Put on the full, the, excuse me, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. For those of you who are here Wednesday night, and I encourage all of you to come on Wednesday night as we continue to read through the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> we were reading this week of how Paul and Barnabas faced persecution in Lystra and Iconium and everything he's talking about here he was witnessing firsthand experiencing firsthand so as he is sharing with these brand new Christians he is seeking to lift them up encourage them in the faith do not give up yes we live in a day and time of spiritual warfare and that was not only something in the first century but that is in our world today we also live in a day of spiritual warfare. And I want to encourage you as we are in a spiritual fight even now, do not give up. All this is true. Verse 13, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand firm. And verse 14, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth. Paul is using here an image of a Roman soldier, an image that Paul knew quite well. This was a day and time in which the Roman Empire was calling the shots all about his world. The Mediterranean Sea that we see on the maps today you know what they called it in, in Latin, the Romans? Mare Nostrum, our sea. The Roman Empire completely circled it. It was like their little private lake. They controlled the shots, and the Roman army was everywhere. So not only this image was real to Paul, but to the people he was riding, they ran into contact with Roman soldiers all the day. They could visualize what he was saying. As he speaks about that belt, the belt was a foundational piece that gave support to the whole body. It wasn't just something to pull up your britches and keep them pulled up. It was like, well, think of one of those big old wrestling belts. You know what I'm talking about? Those big, humongous ones, but not the big shiny ones, the big leather ones to give support. Not only was it foundational, but it was permanence. It was there to pick up the body, especially in the time of battle. Hmm. The belt of truth. 
Paul was picking quite well, was he not? Because as we fight a spiritual war, we cannot fight it on our own power and understanding, but only upstanding on the truth of God in his foundation. It's interesting, when you look back in the Old Testament and the prophet Jeremiah, he talks about a belt, a belt as well, about the waist. And he uses the term loincloth here, but they're interchangeable terms. In Jeremiah chapter 13, 1 through 11, thus says the Lord to me, go and buy a linen loincloth or belt and put it around your waist and do not dip it in water. Very precise instructions indeed. So I bought a loincloth according to the word of the Lord and put it around my waist. And the word of the Lord came to me a second time. Take the loincloth that you have bought, which is around your waist, and arise, go to the Euphrates, and hide it there in a cleft of the rock. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates, as the Lord commanded me. And after many days, the Lord said to me, Arise, go to the Euphrates, and take from there the loincloth that I commanded you to hide there. Then... I went to the Euphrates and dug, and I took the loincloth from the place where I had hidden it, and behold, the loincloth or the belt was spoiled. It was good for nothing. Well, the Euphrates is a mighty river, and if you're bearing it right, bearing it right there next to that river, guess what? Moisture gets all over it, and it dissipates over time. It was spoiled. It was good for nothing. Verse 8, then the word of the Lord came to me. Thus says the Lord, <clears throat> even so will I spoil the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people who refuse to hear my words, who stubbornly follow their own heart and have gone after other gods to serve them and worship them shall be like this loincloth, which is good for nothing. For as the loincloth for belt clings to the waist of a man, so I made the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah cling to me, declares the Lord, that they might be for me a people, a name, a praise, and a glory. But they would not listen. Brothers and sisters, we are in a spiritual warfare today. And when we seek to hide God's truth, it becomes spoiled. Good for nothing. And we, the people of God, follow the same path. And we will become likewise. We must stand upon the foundation of of God's truth as revealed to us. Truth is real. As we put on the whole armor of God, let's start with the foundation. It's not my truth or a truth that is comfortable, but it's the truth of God's word that we stand on and that supports us in the spiritual war that we find ourselves in each and every day of our lives. I encourage you to pray on the whole armor of God. I should have got these written down and passed them out to you. I'll take care of that next time. But here's a prayer for us today. Bow your heads and let us pray. Lord, I am ready to take my stand against the powers of darkness by taking up your whole armor. Help me to stand against the spiritual forces of evil that want to destroy me, my family, and the church. Today, I buckle the belt of truth around my waist. Help me be a person of truth and reliability. Give me the words to say when people ask why I follow Jesus. Help me be faithful in sharing about Jesus' death and resurrection and his promise of eternal life to those 
who believe in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's not take our spiritual warfare for granted. Oh, that's for somebody else. That's for those super extra excellent Christians. No, we're all part of it. If we are truly God's people, if we have truly accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Satan's coming after us. We read there about his fiery darts. Don't be fooled. When we do something for God, Satan is coming after us. If we're doing nothing for God, he couldn't care less about us. We're just another slob on the block. But when we are seeking to make a stand for Jesus Christ, ah, he's got to take us down. But we are not on our own. Put on the whole armor of God. This is part of what we'll be teaching our children during vacation Bible school, and it's not just for them. It's for all of us, amen? We need to be based in the foundation of the truth in God's Word. Let's put on the belt of truth today and every day. I've, I've told this before, there was a pastor back in Tennessee long before my time. He was pastor of First Baptist Nashville. And he was fond of saying when the song, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, would come along, he would say, it is time to quit sitting on the premises and start standing on the promises. Today, let us stand on the truth of God's Word, the only sure foundation. And let us truly stand upon the promises of God. As our musicians come to lead us in song, let us even now stand up, stand up for Jesus. That's your cue. <laughs> As we focus upon Jesus Christ, the one who makes the difference indeed. so much I didn't realize how much the song was gone. Whoops! <laughs> Please grab you a seat for just a moment here, except for y'all. <laughs> Olivia Spellman, she just comes. You remember I said something about two youth accepting Christ at uh, camp this week? Here's half. <laughs> Praise God. And we just, uh, we rejoice with you and your decision. I, I can't, I, I gotta remember not to hit that microphone. And Pastor Tyler, you want to come up here and share a little bit? is uh, she comes today and shares in that decision looking to be baptized. Yep, we're excited. 
Praise God. Amen. <laughs> All right, go sit down. <laughs> I thought he was going to say more than that. Okay. He loves me the whole night. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see it. Well, you grab your, uh, no, let's, uh, Pam, if you'll meet Pam at the back door. She'll, she'll, she, she's going that direction. Let's stand up. Let's not sit on the premises, but stand on the promises of God. Amen? Jesus Christ makes all the difference indeed. Oh, praise, praise the Lord. We are in a spiritual fight, brothers and sisters. May We must take up the, full, the whole armor of God in our lives each and every day. So pray it on daily that he will make the difference in our lives indeed. Let us go forth from here singing. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I knew I'd forget. Sit down. <laughs> There's no hope for me, is there? <laughs> okay. You've been trying. It's time for birthdays and anniversaries last Sunday of the month. So if you've had a birthday this month, come right up here. Put a little something in the little bank and come stand on this side. Oh, and anniversaries. Put a little something in. Come on this side. I want to say the anniversary is going to outnumber the birthdays this time. You got a birthday? All right. 29? You, you tell me the other day, 29 and holding? Yep. Okay. For the third time. For the third time, okay. <laughs> you still have birthdays? Uh, every now. Every now and then. <laughs> Let's sing. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. put up with any more of this <laughs> all right oh thank you and one more try let us go for singing let's stand bind us together Lord bind us together with cords that cannot be broken bind us together Thank you all for coming this morning.